What is happening, guys? Cowboy here. Welcome back, and it's time to continue. So, from our bonfire, head on down. If you remember, we were uh, making our way to the Titanite Demon when we had an unfortunate accident. Just for good measure, let me... Oh, no, don't take that off. God. Um, as I mentioned in the past, any time you have a chunk of souls on the line, go for that ring of sacrifice. I'm still too heavy. Perfect. Oh, man. Every time I make that roll, honestly, it's like I clench my fucking butthole because I feel like I'm not going to make it. And then I do make it, and I'm like, oh, okay, things are good. But I always feel like I'm not going to make it. All right. Let's go show this Titanite demon who the boss is. Motherfucking Silver Knight Boar Man, I'ma whoop him. Um, so if you can't kill the Titanite demon, run past, grab those eyes of death, and then you can be on your way. If you're like me, and you insist on taking this baddie down, shield on up and whoop him. Oh my god, it's the damn jump attack. thing is so strong. He also has, like, a ridiculous hitbox on that catch pole. And that damn jump attack. Honestly, the one I think the most annoying thing about Titanite Demons isn't the fact that they're hard or that they get stronger. It's the fact that you can get the Titanite catch pull to drop. It's actually pretty rare. But it's an absolute potato weapon. Like, it's honestly not good almost at all. Like, ask anyone who's played through Dark Souls and be like, yo, I got the Titanite catch pull. And they'll be like, lol, what? Like, why would you use that? Ah, pain in my ass. Give me your Demon Titanite. So anyway, uh, if you got the Eyes of Death and ran, what you want to do is jump on over, nestle in the coffin. Uh, once you get inside of this, the Titanite Demon will not chase you. But the big thing is you have to have at least one Eye of Death to do this. Now this is actually a uh, very common part of speedrun strats. What you do is you go straight to the catacombs without hitting any bonfires. Uh, you do a couple of rather tricky rolls to get down to this area from like the start. Sprint on past that guy, grab the eyes of the death, and then hop into the coffin. We'll see why in just a moment. to your new home. Alright. And we are down deep, deep, deep in the Tomb of Giants. Over here. This monster. Brave Lord Nido. Pray to the sarcophagus. Enter the Covenant. Grave Lord Covenant uh, is a PvP oriented covenant, pretty cool one. Just for joining, you get the Grave Lord Sword and the Miracle Grave Lord Sword Dance, which honestly is one of my favorite looking spells in the entire game, but it's honestly terrible. And I hate that about it. Uh, but anyway, you level up through Eyes of Death, you get this through the PvP, and the main reason that I said that this is a very popular speedrun thing is because of the Grave Lord Sword. 24 strength, 13 dex, and remember that you can two-hand weapons uh, with only a fraction of that. So, uh, in this case, if you were, I think it's 18? Let's see if I'm remembering if I'm doing my math right here. I'm so bad at doing math in my head these days. You know when, like, you're young, you do math constantly in school, and they're like, you're going to use math someday, and then you get old, and you don't use math for fucking anything. Okay, so 16 strength. You need 16 strength, 13 dex, and you could two-hand this thing. Um, and probably the craziest thing about it is, as you can see, there is a huge modifier to it. 
Um, and what it basically does is this sword can inflict toxic on enemies. You remember that annoying shit where we were getting hit by those guys with the blow darts? With this sword, you inflict that on, like, everything in the game. Uh, on top of that, it actually has a pretty potent moveset. You know, it's a curved sword, so swing, swing. Really nice, strong thrust for tight quarters. Spinning sweep. Um, you know, if you're looking to speedrun, this is like the go-to item. Is run down here, get the Grave of Lord Sword. But anyway, now that we have that and the Covenant, we're going to go back on over, nestle in the coffin again, and we'll be on our way out. Um, if you really want to know the exact route to get it, if you just Google Grave Lord Sword Run, you'll find plenty of videos uh, showcasing how to get down there really fast. In particular, I would recommend Lobos Jr. He's kind of like a pro at doing trick runs and stuff like that, so good content creator uh, in his own right as well, so check him out if you're curious for more soul stuff. Anyway, now that we have that, I'm gonna get back on out of our coffin. We're gonna go through the broken wall. No, it's back the other way. Yeah. Okay. Always a little bit disoriented when we're down here. Show me the way. There we go. Go through this. Um, just checking my notes. Broken wall, sort of on your left. Ah, yeah, this thing. Okay. Follow. Oh, got my directions mixed up. Soul item was on my right, and I wrote down left. Ow, stop that. Oh, grab the soul item. Bunch of skeletons down here. Get up before he knocks me off this damn thing. Alright, now this area can be, I don't want to say tricky, but you just got to be careful of where you walk. You can see right there how there's darker bricks. You can see right there how there's darker bricks. Either of those will cause the bricks to collapse and you will fall down through. Uh, so you don't want to do that just yet. Um, we're going to go down that ladder. We're going to stick to the corners of this room. We're going to go through here. And take another ladder down. Up ahead, we have two archers and the final necromancer. So, having killed that necro at this point, if you uh, do not have a skull lantern, they should drop one. Now, this is actually something that's a little bit kind of unconfirmed. I've heard a lot of varying reports on it. Uh, and the runs I've done, I have gotten it so far. But if a necromancer does not drop a skull lantern upon killing this final necro, you are supposed to get one. Anyway, um, from them, we're going to swap off of that, put back on our primary. That oh, damn, all these freaking scimitars, I get rid of them. Um, head up that ladder again, and we're now going to drop down and fight a black knight. Another excellent opportunity to get a Black Knight weapon. So, just have your shield ready. See, he will rush you right at you. Oh, man. And this one in particular has a chance to drop the Black Knight Great Axe. Very, very powerful weapon. It's slow. But it hits like a fucking truck. It's just like, boom! Big money, no whammies. Drop daddy a great axe. Oh, no great axe, but I did get a shield from him. Too bad I already got it. Uh, so come over here, grab the soul of a proud knight. And at this point, you're actually going to homeward bone back to the bonfire. So this is uh, one of the reasons I bought a bunch of homeward bones off of the dude earlier. Now... Reverse your hollowing. Uh, at this point, feel free to just keep your primary weapon on. Um, there are a 
I mean, all the necromancers are dead, so, you know, at this point, uh, Divine isn't a concern anymore. So, we need to roll on down from here. This pet, we'll call this the Patch of Spiky Bridge. Uh, we're going to roll to the ledge, and then we're going to drop down below for a soul item and a Leroy's gear. So you see that ledge right there? That's what we got to get to. A slightly safer way is to go that same path that we've been taking up until now. Roll the drop, and then around the corner into the grave. I like to go a little bit close just to trigger these guys. Uh, those explosions, by the way, are physical damage. Um, going over here, just, well, I guess let me go over there just to show you guys. There's nothing over there for us, but uh, I will go just for the sake of, you know, drawing everything. Skeletons. Another way to know if you've killed a skeleton for good is when you kill a skeleton for good, they'll drop their souls for you. Boy, another scimitar. I can't wait. I remember this wall from earlier? How we broke that wall open, and then we went and we killed that skeleton and all that stuff. Dropped it down, bought the big guy, all that. Yeah, that's where we're at. So now you know. Alright, so we need to drop on down. Now you can... This. Um, if you're worried about it, if you're worried about your health, take off your armor. Down. Grab that. Heal up. Gonna summon good old Paladin Leroy. Guy is a massive badass. And then we're gonna drop down for that item. Uh, now, you definitely do not need Leroy for this fight, especially this late into it. Uh, this will give us all the cleric stuff, priest's hat, all that stuff. Uh, as well as the mace. The main reason we're summoning Paladin Leroy is for these. These are known as Bone Wheels. Bone Wheels are one of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. And you can imagine why. They just keep doing this until they eventually realize they can't get you, and then they back away and they proceed to do it again. Um, so they're going after Leroy. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, a shield is your best friend against these stupid things. They're not hard to kill, they're just dangerous with how much damage they can do. You can see Leroy gives no shits. Leroy does not fuck around with uh, Bone Wheels. I will beat the shit out of you! Big ol' mace. But anyway. Um, actually, before you go into the boss, uh, one thing you could do... If you're not bringing Leroy along, remember that there is that bonfire over by the blacksmith, just to... That's actually really, really close to where we're at, just to show that. So this is where we drop down with Leroy after getting the item. Run right over this way, and over this hump. Right through here. Is the blacksmith. And you do not quit. Uh, do be cautious about that. If the bone wheels get into here, they could actually uh, hurt the blacksmith. You don't want that happening. Leroy going. Leroy? Leroy? Is he back by the boss? I mean, it doesn't matter if this boss has but boosted health or not, but, uh... I seem to have lost my Leroy. Ah, there you are. Yep. A little derpy at times, but he's potent. Oh, uh, so anyway, this boss is a complete fucking joke. Uh, its name is Pinwheel. The boss will make duplicates. They die extremely fast. They shoot fireballs. Um... To be honest, you can just walk up and just press R1 a couple times and he's dead. He's going to drop one of three masks, either the Father Mask, which will increase your equipment load, the Mother Mask, which will increase your health, or the Child Mask, which is my personal favorite because it gives you a stamina region effect similar to that of the Clorinthy Ring or the uh, Grass Crest Shield. So anyway, head on in and whoop. I'll see, the most dangerous part of this fight is the drop, you know. Oh, you gotta take some damage. I mean, he's a cool boss, aesthetically. You know, the three different masks and 
you can see he's tinkering and doing stuff and then all the heads look at each other and they all start moving around it's just that he is a complete pushover That was the boss with boosted health. So now that we have the right of kindling, we can use that to uh, boost up some stuff. Bonfire is up to plus 20 now. Go on up the ladder. Go. This is where that skull lantern comes in good. Uh, and we're going to go around this way. Now you could get this later, but we're already here. That's why we're snagging it. Uh, skull lantern is so useful. There we go, and there's our soul item. So at this point, go on homeward on out. We're going to head on back to Fire Link. Now we have war. Now see, this is... Uh, on one side, some people may say it's worth going down and fighting Pinwheel early and getting the Rite of Kindling. Um, while having 20 Estus works, my personal opinion is that I feel it makes you a little... Actually, I'm going to go uh, upgrade something. I think it makes you a little bit too dependent on your Estus. You know, when you have 20 Estus, you're a lot less careful. You play more sloppy. You know, you'll take more hits. Um, and at least for the early portion of the game, I feel it is more beneficial as a player. I know this is going to sound weird, but I feel that only having the potential of 10 Estus makes you play like a better player. You are more careful. You are... All I need is two more of these babies, and this thing is maxed. Dude. I'm going to need to go buy some Twinkling Titanite from the giant blacksmith. Um, but ha knowing that you only have 10 Estus available, you do play more careful. Play a lot more careful because you're worried about, you know, I could die. Um, so, you know, if you really want to go down and you want to kill him, feel free to. You know, there's nothing saying you can't. Uh, I think the the bigger issue is that it's a huge pain in the ass to leave that place. And given, you know, that we, there was that one path that we went all the way down and we popped out near the uh, second Necromancer and you could run across the bridge, it doesn't change the fact that, honestly, the catacombs just, it sucks to get through. And there's so many little drops and ladders and it's kind of like, wait, what? Um, you can ignore him. They went down into the uh, Tomb of Giants. We're going to meet up with them later. Um... Now, at least we are going to run up and do our curl into the ball and go fight the demon. Once again, go this way, line yourself up, roll off. Now you may remember that previously we had uh, gone to this place um, just to pick up the rusted red iron ring. This time we're going to go there to basically close the loop on out. Let's teleport. You guys have seen this cutscene before. So I'm keep that all on. Kill all those. Uh, similar to before, don't immediately run straight through. We're going to run across and get to the bonfire, because if you don't get to the bonfire and you do die on this boss, you're going to have to take the elevator and jump down and do that whole shindig over again. So instead, would you go away? You don't hurt enough. Come here, rest at the bonfire. Oh, I'm just barely short. You know what? Let me... Um, Uh, one... You guys should be plenty. How much is that? 10,000? Oh, yeah, that's definitely enough. Alright. Alright, so, now we're gonna fight the stray demon. 
very similar to the Asylum Demon, except way stronger and a huge magic AoE that you can uh, put out a couple times. So, as for the magic AoE, pull on out your Crest Shield. Uh, even though it doesn't have the highest stability, having that 80 magic defense is going to be very useful compared to like the 25 on that or the 42 on that. Um, as for this fight, the two main things to look for is he'll swing his mace away and kind of point at you, doing like an anime pose, and then he will kind of slam it into the ground. Both of those will do an explosion. This fight is very much going to be about blocking and dodging at the right times. Um, he's got big hits. He is going to absolutely destroy your stamina if you try to just block everything. Uh, he also has the butt drop from before. But to be completely honest, he's not all that bad. Uh, additionally, he is very, very weak to bleed. So for those out there that are uh, playing as dex users and using a bleed type weapon, you should have no issue whatsoever with this fight. If you do have an issue with it, you can always come back later. So, yep, that's the, that's honestly the hardest part of this fight. Uh, as soon as you drop down, he's gonna attack you. And, you know, you lose, like, half your health, and then he's just standing there, and you're like, well, shit. Like, honestly, getting down there to fight him is harder than actually killing him. Just because, you know, you don't want to... Losing a bunch of health. No one likes starting a, a boss fight having just lost a bunch of health. just how much he is burning through my stamina. Finally got a small window to get some health back. Um, you can see he's going to slam it into the ground. This will be his fire explosion. Uh, it's kind of easier to fight this guy completely unlocked so you have a better idea of what he's doing. There's his other fire explosion. Here comes his booty slam. Man, trying to sit on me. I'm trying to remember, I want to say that all of the Black Knight weapons actually do bonus damage against demons, and that's why he's getting chunked so damn hard. Like I said, not exactly a difficult fight, just kind of a hard one to first get into, because, you know, he's, you take a bunch of damage as soon as you land, he's swinging, but once you get in on him, not that bad. And now we have our first Titanite Slab. So if you have your chunks, and you have your very large ember, this is what will get your weapon up to plus 15. Also got a humanity and a homeward bump. Uh, so from here, we need to take the ladder. Right, and then we're gonna drop on down, and we're gonna head to the left. I am going to swap some stuff back. There we go. Got a black knight down here. Oh, I should have totally blocked that, or uh, parried that. I mean, come on, buddy. There we go. Mess this dude up. Hey, another Black Knight shield. You know what? I didn't even look to see what mass did I get from killing Pinwheel. Did I not get a mask? Is it on the ground? Did I not pick it up? Did they changed that? I did not get a mask from Pinwheel. What the shit? I didn't even notice. Huh. Well, regardless, you can buy all the masks from Patches uh, after the Tomb of the Giants, so it's not a major concern. But, uh, you know, after that, go over here, kill that knight, get that doll. And then, uh, from here, Homeward Bone, and then Teleport. You don't have to Homeward Bone, you could walk all the way out. 
it's just really easy to just use a homeward bone and then work from here back to Firelink. Now, uh, in the next episode, we're going to be heading on over to the Painted World. One thing you need to understand about the Painted World is that when you go to the Painted World, you're not leaving until you finish the Painted World. Though I'm also going to reiterate this at the beginning of the next episode. Um, if you're not ready for it, skip it for now. Honestly, it's not that bad. Um, Personally, before I go, I'm going to go and uh, buy two Twinkling Titanite and get this weapon up to plus five. Uh, but aside from that, that's it. So either way, uh, the next episode, we're going to start from the Dark Moon Tomb Bonfire, and we will see you guys then.